Welcome to this pre-recording of lecture 28 on making animations. Um, so this is the third lecture on plotting. Um, we will, I will start with a motivating example, uh, an example which is left of an, as an exercise to this lecture, but you should be able to do after following through. Um, I will demonstrate the animations first uh, with a simple one-dimensional, um, well, it's always one-dimensional, but a two-dimensional plot. Then we have a more involved uh, tangent line problem. And in three dimensions, uh, two natural, in three dimensions, we make the distinctions between surfaces and space curves. And two natural animations are the spinning of a surface and the extension of the range of the parameter. Um, the, the, the range the parameter uh, lives in of the um, parameter form of a curve. Okay, uh, so here is then uh, the motivating example. Draw the golden rectangle with ruler and compass. Um, here you see the steps in this animation. So this animation runs in a loop and I will let it run for three iterations before I move on to the next slide. The main point that I want to say that in an environment like SageMath, you can justify the images uh, with the computation. So in a Jupyter Notebook environment, you can document the step-by-step -step, um, building up of this uh, mathematical uh, demonstration. So this is, in, in a way, uh, it's, a, it's just a, a movie, uh, but it is also uh, demonstrating an algorithm on how to construct the golden rectangle. Uh, by the way, uh, this is named after the golden ratio. Uh, a number already known or a proportion already known in antiquity for uh, the Greeks used this in building their temples. Okay, so um, let me then uh, introduce our first animation. We consider a periodic function. Um, so there is frequency 1 with this argument of the sine function 2 times pi. Um, it's natural to look what this periodic function, what happens to this periodic function when we increase the frequency. And um, an animation is just a sequence of plots. Uh, the plots in the sequence are called frames, uh, but with a simple list comprehension, we essentially define the animation. Here is then uh, the, our first animation um, in the uh, second part of this uh, recording. I will give the uh, instructions uh, in SageMath on how to build this. And you see that the amplitude, uh, the decaying exponential, uh, becomes more and more visible as we increase this uh, frequency. Um, our next animation is uh, very much related to the motivating example of the golden ratio. Um, so I will be using the primitives, uh, the circle, the point, and the line uh, to make this animation. So when we discussed this problem earlier, uh, I was using implicit uh, plot for the circle, implicit plot for the tangent line. Um, which, if you may remember, is the Taylor series approximation of degree 1. 
So these are the two animations that we will make uh, in the plane. Um, this is actually the most involved animation, uh, which is entirely controlled by this moving point on the red, uh, shown as a red disk. So we have a point that moves on the circle. Um, it moves here counterclockwise um, with uh, each time incrementing uh, with a fixed increment of the angle. Uh, when we define an animation, we first uh, carefully look at the first frames. Um, after we have made an animation, we can make a graphics array and look at all frames all at once. Um, so the uh, plot here is a made with a graphics array. Um, so there, it looks much more involved, but what is important, of course, is that uh, the blue circle remains the same. Uh, what is actually moving is that uh, point and we have the tangent. Um, so sharing the same layout uh, is important here. So we are using the same constructions, uh, but the constructions depend on the parameter. So with three-dimensional plots, um, when so we in the last lecture I used this parabolic cylinder in the definition of the twisted cubic and whenever we make uh, a three-dimensional plot we get something that is two-dimensional and then we get a better look and feel if we change the viewpoint um, so the natural animations that are with uh, the um, with the three-dimensional plots with the surfaces is that you can give more a look or feel uh, the, the correct uh, way to look at this uh, cylinder if you f spin it around. So this is a spin plot where the x-axis is rotated. So if I'm here, so you see here what happens is that the x-axis rotates. Uh, alternatively, so there is the y-axis. So the y-axis is here uh, rotating and that makes that the cylinder spins, but then in another way. And of course one can combine both the x and the y-axis. So one purpose of this animation here is that you would become a little bit more familiar with the setting of the angles in the rotation of the coordinate axis. So here is then the third. Uh, so this is a three-dimensional plot. Uh, we can rotate that cylinder also around the z-axis. So it does not take much to make these animations, as I will uh, demonstrate with the Jupyter Notebook. Um, then uh, the, the last uh, animation that I will make uh, is uh, a space curve. A uh, space curve is defined by functions in one variable. And then also here a natural animation is that we extend the range of uh, the parameter. So you see that uh, the number of plot points uh, remains unchanged. Uh, so at the very beginning uh, this is a very smooth curve but already now you see uh, that the number of plot points remains and that might not be enough uh, for a smooth representation of this complicated knot. Um, so we saw the Lissajou curves, uh, so they looked uh, kind of nice. So you can also make an animation on the trajectories uh, that you have somehow a feeling on uh, how this uh, curve such as these are actually defined. Okay, so let me now move to SageMath. Um, so the advantage of a computer algebra system is that uh, the 
plotting can go jointly with the computations, um, which also gives then a natural justification uh, for uh, the plots. Okay, I have prepared a Jupyter notebook, and whenever uh, things get too complicated, I will copy and paste from it. But uh, the purpose of this uh, whole lecture is that you can build your own notebook uh, because that's actually the most important resource uh, that you will get from this course. So this is already lecture 28 um, in the fourth part of the course um, where we plot and we solve problems. Um, So with animations we make movies, uh, we can also make graphical user interfaces where the user is in control. Uh, we will do this in a later lecture, how to uh, give more control to the user. So in, in, in a way these animations here are still very static. Um, so they're nice to consume, nice to look at, but they kind of force a, a pace, they force a viewpoint on, um, on the user. Okay, so what is our um, first animation? Uh, so we look at a periodic function and we increase the frequency. So consider the function f of x where we have the decaying amplitude and then I have the sine function 2 times pi times x. So this is a function uh, with one variable, uh, but I'm going to introduce the parameter that controls the frequency. So when I'm defining this in Sage, I'm going to define a function and this function will introduce the parameter. So what is important here is uh, the um, expression that we obtain. So let me carefully uh, define, uh, state that we have what we have defined. So this is a function, so we have defined the function f, which takes on input the frequency, so the number of loops uh, that uh, this uh, sign makes, uh, the frequency and returns the expression of the periodic function with dk amplitude. So this is a course on symbolic computation and we have seen already many times that we can define functions to build expressions. And this is actually such other function where the independent variable is actually not x. Uh, so x is the variable in the expression which will be used in each plot. Uh, the main parameter here that is running through the frames in the animation is the k. So by defining this function uh, in this way, I'm kind of emphasizing what really matters here. Well, by the way, what matters is that we have a plot. So let me plot the first frame. So where the symbol x, so x is not really, uh, a, so it's a predefined variable, but it's here the symbol that is used in this expression. I let it run between negative two and two. And that will be the first frame in my animation. So I will save it. 
and then render this. So I do this all in one same window, which is always uh, same code cell, um, which is kind of risky, but I feel still fr still fresh enough that I don't make type errors. So here we have the first frame in the animation. So that's the one. Let me also make two. Where I now gave the frequency. And I must give the same range for X. So I have the second frame. Where you can see that uh, this periodic function runs uh, faster. Okay, with this I can already make my first animation. Uh, I have two plots, so one, two, and animate is a command which takes on input a list. And I do one, two, show. And this is going to take a little while. Um, so here is my first animation. Simple and good, or actually not so good. You see that I already made a first mistake. Um, um, you see that the 1 and the minus 1, they are flashing. Uh, and that comes because when the plot 1 is made, the frequency is so weak that we don't really see the amplitude uh, to its fullest. So the sine function doesn't really get to 1, so that's why it sh sh stops short. But in making animations, this is one of the first mistakes that one makes. One must also, in making animations, one must use the same frame for the coordinates. So in particular, um, we must set uh, the Y min and the Y max. Uh, so let me make uh, the frames now. So the frames in the animation, I will use the plot for f of k with x still ranging between negative 2 and 2. And now I set the y min to negative 1, the y max to plus 1. This is particularly good for uh, needed for the first frame and the first frame starts at 1 so I want 10 frames so here is the making of the frames and I made a syntax error um, so I have my plot that is running um, and now I am indeed uh, a little confused uh, because I most likely went too fast so let me first make the case for the y min and the y max. So let me now plot the first frame again. So here you see now that the 1 becomes uh, very prominently. Um, I'm going to now plot the frames um, of the lists so I'm going to make a list comprehension so this is a good statement so I can copy and paste it in add the range change the one into a K and assign this to 
and now everything went well and I have our first animation so I will animate this give all the frames and then I can show the animation so I can do a dot show uh, there are some parameters I can specify that I want to see this no more than uh, 10 times and I can also control the speed okay so here we go the speed is actually quite fast uh, but it will stop after 10 times um, showing the last frame uh, I can show I can build the graphics array um, so let me say that I want the first five frames I can make a graphics array with five columns and then I can choose, choose the figure size and um, remove the axis So this gives me the first five frames in this animation. So that was also the statement. Uh, the, the, so this is the picture that I've used for the slides. So you can assign this to something and then save it. So one can also save an animation. So you can save an animation as GIF. So this is our first animation. So to view this animated GIF file, you then don't need uh, SageMod anymore. Um, so this is a computed result. Okay, so uh, that's essentially it uh, in making animations. Uh, so. Uh, draw your first frames, decide on the parameter that you want to use. Uh, so here we have a function that returns an expression. Be mindful of the ranges, so this is not a good animation, so the y-axis uh, changes too much, so be mindful of that. Uh, then also the plotting of the frames, I made this mistake, um, so be careful. Um, for type errors, so it's good to work with one statement in one code cell. There are the parameters, so by default, uh, the animations show in a loop. Um, and there's also a default value for the delay. Um, okay, so let me now consider uh, our second animation. So we have a moving tangent line to a circle. So in this plot, uh, so we solved this problem before, but then we were using implicit plot. Uh, so uh, to make, so we consider the a moving point on a circle uh, with uh, two draw points we have uh, the primitive point we also have the primitives for the circle which is uh, the primitives and this is circle and line so one can of course draw a circle with an implicit plot but uh, it's better to do this um, as I will try to illustrate now the unit circle is defined by a circle with center at the origin and radius 1. So here we see the 
unit circle. And then I have to define my moving point. Uh, so the moving point uh, will be on the circle. So here too, I will pick an angle. So let me remind you that in the polar representation, so a point on the unit circle is defined by cosine t sine t for some angle. So you can think of now of angles. Um, so the point is that the t changes in increments of uh, fractions of pi, but the range is discrete. So if you want to generate a range of angles with pure Python, uh, we can also actually do this with NumPy, uh, as we have seen in an earlier part in the course. But uh, to so we, 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 we have to work with fractions of pi. Very similar, um, so if we want all the angles in a list comprehension, then I have to do 2 times pi, 2 times pi times k, divided by the number of frames. So here I say, let's say that we want 10 frames for k in range 10. So this gives me uh, the 10 angles for the moving point. So it starts at 0, and then it goes all the way to 9 fifths. Uh, 10 fifths, uh, the next step is when 10 fifths is 2 times pi, is again the equivalent of 0. So we make one full circle. So I can build my animation now. Um, I will use uh, the frame uh, that will plot the point for uh, the angles and I will use the same K uh, I could use for A in angles but I will use the index in the animation. So the K uh, will range over all the indices in the angles list. Okay, so my Kate point, what does my uh, Kate point look like? I'm using the point primitive, and I have the cosine angles K sine angles K. Um, so the outer index is uh, the point primitive, so I have to define the size. So let me pick 20. The color is red. So this is a function that defines, or that should define, uh, the point, and I made uh, somewhere uh, a mistake, uh, unable to convert to an integer. So what happens here is that uh, the function uh, evaluates uh, prematurely. I can fix this uh, with uh, the lambda. So. If I do the first frame, so this will be a plot that I can show. And now you see that I already made the mistake that uh, I did not uh, set uh, the correct range, but I can fix this also in the show. Um, so I can say that the uh, range for And by the way, this is not the first frame, it is the second frame. OK. 
Okay. Um, and a mistake. Forgotten. The equal. Okay. Um, too tight. So here you now see the correct layout. So I can make my animation and then also in the argument of the animation provide the, the viewing window. Um, so let's do this. So I have the frames which are uh, calling the point So these are the frames in my animation. And when I show this, I have to be careful that I specify the range because I didn't do it in the um, plotting command. Okay, it seems to be quite difficult to have everything done at once. So I can do a show. Uh, let me copy and paste so that will hopefully um, eliminate many of the type errors. Okay, apparently with an animation I cannot provide the range. And now you see uh, that my animation will look very strange because uh, uh, this is um, the coordinate system that rotates around the point. Very funny. Um, so the point remains uh, the center. Uh, this is not what we want, um, clearly not. So I have to adjust uh, this uh, function here, uh, where, or what I can do, and actually I want this on the circle, so I can make my new frames, which will be the plot of the unit circle. So I have my unit circle defined here and then each time I add the output of PTK to it. So these here are the frames where I add the circle. Okay, and now uh, you see that I have the correct uh, representation. I have a circle, that uh, a disk that circles uh, around, that represents the moving point. So adding uh, the picture of the um, circle showed uh, took care of the um, took care of the um, stability of the coordinate axis. So in order to provide uh, the tangent line now, I will use a property that you may have seen from calculus. Imagine a vector originating at the origin and ending at the disk, at the red disk, then the 
vector that is perpendicular to that vector is the direction of the tangent line. So that is the construction that I'm going to use now. I'm going to copy and paste uh, because I was starting to make too many uh, type errors. So I will take my um, definition. So I have the functions, the functions for the point that are redefined here. So let me explain what these three instructions are. So these three instructions uh, define three functions. Um, so the first function uh, evaluates the coordinates of the point. And then the V1 and the V2 uh, are the vectors that are perpendicular to this. Uh, so we can interpret the point as the endpoint of the vector. And uh, you can see if you make the inner product, if you multiply the endpoints together, so you have cosine times minus sine plus the sine times the cosine. So the V1 is perpendicular to that vector. Now uh, we have the point uh, and we have the endpoints of the tangent. Um, so the vector, you, if you would plot only V1, you would see only one part of the vector. Uh, what I'm then doing, I'm actually flipping the sign. So we go forward and backward. Um, so it could be interesting to also uh, do this construction one after the other. So the endpoints uh, are then the inputs to the line primitive, and that's the next instruction. So in the next instructions, two instructions, I give the endpoints. Uh, so we have the red point, and the we add to this the coordinates of the two vectors. Uh, so we have the point A and the point B. Uh, we add in to the red disk that circles uh, the circle, uh, we add to this the endpoints of the tangent line. Okay, and now that's essentially it. Uh, so let me uh, continue uh, with the copying and the pasting. So here is the recipe for the oops uh, the I'm going to be in trouble now uh, because I have the first point that is not defined so I'm going to do this uh, without the point and I may be in trouble because I have uh, redefined the PT it was not good with choosing my names uh, so it is indeed uh, so let me uh, redefine that function here as the FPT. So the F function here. Um, so in a way, uh, this is uh, interesting um, because you see now, if you want to be consistent, I have to also redefine my frames again. I will not go through that animation, but it would be good if I would Okay, do it everywhere. So the work, the notebook remains correct. So now I have FPT1 for my red point. And this gives me the first, well, actually, it's the second frame in the animation. Okay, so now I have the tangent lines. So these will be my frames. Um, so I will make the unit circle. I will add to this the point, and I will add to this the line with endpoints A, K, and bk. 
So now it's very important that we understand the meaning of the brackets. So uh, the A and the B, they are functions. So we cannot use uh, the square brackets of the lists. Okay, everything went fine so I can do the animation with the frames and then do the showing and oops there is still something that went wrong Okay, uh, I find this actually quite amusing. Uh, so what happened is that uh, the range for the line, uh, the line actually went uh, out of uh, place. So let me see if I can fix this. So the line is uh, sometimes longer and sometimes um, if I can do the X min minus one x max plus one okay so apparently this cannot be fixed in this way so uh, the line has to be fixed here so let me copy and paste hoping that I did not uh, make any errors already I indeed did forgot a comma and then I have a trailing comma okay so in a way uh, these demonstrations are kind of uh, rife with errors but it's also kind of uh, pedagogically good to uh, demonstrate that also I make these mistakes um, and uh, often it is uh, also very wrong to show you only the perfect uh, the final products because then you get the impression that everything has to be done um, immediately right Okay, um, so I have eight minutes left uh, to show the other features. Uh, so I will probably truncate a little bit and uh, refer to the prepared notebooks. So let's spin a surface. Uh, so we have the implicit plot of the um, parabolic cylinder so now I have to declare the X Y and Z so we are in tree space and the surface is the quadratic cylinder which I plot with implicit plot 3d so this is the surface uh, X square minus Y for x ranging between negative 1 and 1, uh, y ranges between 0 and 1 because it's positive, and z, you see the z is not there, but since this is three dimensional, I must uh, declare it and implicit plot 3D. So there we go. So this is the uh, plot of the parabolic cylinder. Of course, uh, I'm when as soon as I see this, I'm going to spin this around um, myself uh, so I can do this. Uh, but if this is, for example, if you want to make slides like I did, you can't really. Uh, export uh, this functionality to a PDF file but you can make an animation 
So what I can do is I will copy and paste and I can rotate this. So I will make an animation um, out of this, but I can, what I will do is I will rotate X with an angle two times pi divided by 10. So this will be one of the frames in my animation. So here you see that uh, this parabolic surface is rotated. Okay, so uh, let me now make the frames. So I copy and paste. So I will call it uh, the X frames because I'm rotating um, the X. I will paste in the um, implicit plot command, inserting the parameter k, and then for k in range 10. So the 10 corresponds here with my um, step size. So now I can make my animation of the X frames. Give the figure size here. Okay, by the way, and uh, I'm doing this still on a quite a fast laptop. Um, it may be that if you are executing this in the cloud, that now we are at the stage in this course where we are doing computationally intensive. Uh, computations. Um, so, um, and it works. So here we are. So here you see the tumbling uh, parabolic cylinder where we rotate the x-axis. On the slides I've shown the other two rotations, uh, but they are uh, now trivial to make. You just replace x by y. Okay, two minutes left for my surface, uh, for, for my space uh, curve, not. So and for that I will copy and uh, paste uh, from my prepared uh, worksheet. So here you see the other animations. Um, so uh, I will reset everything that might save um, also a little bit. Uh, by the way, if you are saving, so that went fast. Um, so if you're saving, it could be good to save without uh, the animations. Um, so to make the frames, I will animate this. So you see here uh, the instruction that I'm about to copy and paste. So I'm using the parametric plot 3D. In the parametric plot 3D, I have the curve defined here, should have pointed this out. The curve is defined by a list of three expressions that are evaluated in T. So here I'm plotting for the entire range. So the syntax for the plot 3D curve is where you have um, the three expressions one for x, one for y, one for z, and then you have the range. Here it goes all the way to 2 pi. Um, by the way, you see these periodic uh, functions, and you can make this uh, not uh, very complicated, even more complicated by, or less complicated by changing the frequencies, uh, the 7 here. Okay, now the k is now also controlling an angle. Um, so I have 21 frames here. So my animation will 
may still be a little bit too ambitious, but I will try to illustrate it anyway. So I have the frames, and then I will show the plot. So essentially, I'm done with all statements. Uh, so this is minute 50 of uh, this lecture. Uh, I hope that uh, I have um, given you a good start on making your own animations. Um, within a computer algebra system like Sage, uh, we can uh, nicely compute everything and preview the frames one after the other uh, before they are rendered. And here is my last animation, uh, which is now running in a Jupyter Notebook. Um, as I illustrated before, you can save this animation into a .gif file, and then it can be rendered without the age of uh, without the aid of a Jupyter Notebook or SageMath. So I'm running a little bit over time, but I hope that this was worthwhile, uh, that uh, with a very little effort, we can make uh, very interesting uh, animations.